We have a great time whenever True. he comes on the show. We have a great time. The Hall of Famer, Joe Namath, he joins us on the Michael K Show. Joe, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you? I'm doing well. Hello, Don, Peter, Michael. I'm excited to be on with you. Uh, you know, Don and I, and Peter, we were talking about this earlier. You've been retired for a long time, and tomorrow the Jets are still trying to replace you. I mean, do you find that <laughs> as hard to believe as we do? <laughs> Well, uh, do I find that it's hard to believe? Uh, well, I guess if you have to put it all together, yeah, it only comes. I've only, I'm only one package, you know. There hasn't been another one likely, exactly. Being a Gemini and all. And you, <laughs> you know, I'm BSing here now when you put that to me. But uh, there hasn't been a, 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 an entire team put together like the team we had to be able to get to the championship game and win it and uh, whatever quarterback they have they damn sure better have some other players around you know i find interesting about this draft is is that they talk about rosen and his confidence and how he just seems to have a way about him that it's perceived as negative and then that was you i mean you had a confidence but you always were ready to play joe you never you never let being Joe Namath interfere with you being ready to play on Sunday. But why is it nowadays when a player comes in with a chip on his shoulder, comes in with a lot of confidence and swag the way Rosen does, that it's always perceived as a negative? Well, it makes things interesting, you know. Uh, uh, controversy. It's what makes the world go around to some extent anyway. I mean, Mayfield's got to have a chip on his shoulder. Lamar mm -hmm. Jackson's going to come in. Uh, he hasn't been talked to a whole lot uh, with a chip on his shoulder. People aren't even talking about Mason Rudolph and Donald uh, Allen's getting a lot of recognition. Uh, uh, it, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, and I agree, uh, Josh Rosen, uh, man, any cat that can play tennis the way he could play, he's got to be a heck of an athlete, and he's got to be pretty damn confident and close to cocky. Now, I was reading a story that Rich Semini wrote. He spoke with you. You're really impressed with Baker Mayfield, Joe. Tell me why, and are you concerned about him being about six feet? I'm concerned about him being about six feet because, uh, realistically, uh, the animals uh, in general, professional football and the sports world, have really gotten bigger and bigger. And uh, the thing uh, comes into play about being able to see your vision throwing from the pocket. Uh, aside from that, uh, I mean, there's one guy that has just absolutely amazed me over the years, and that's Drew Brees, because he's in uh, the same ballpark, I guess, as Mayfield with their size. And uh, there's only been one before those two, before Brees, and that was Franz Tarkenton that's a Hall of Famer at that size. I mean, uh, it's hard, man. Now, are we, gonna, are we saying that Mayfield is uh, another Drew Brees? Is he going to be another Drew Brees? Because uh, no one else has done that uh, in modern football here. Uh, that's hard to do. Uh, you, you get the guy, Brees, or rather Mayfield, is the best passer I've seen hmm. here in college ball in, in recent years. He's the best passer I've seen. But... Uh, is he physically uh, going to be able to play uh, against these guys, man? Because he's going to see faster ball players on the other side of the ball running him down when he does get out of there. Uh, he, he's got great quick feet, and uh, he's quicker, you know, on his feet uh, than anyone except Jackson, maybe. But uh, Brady doesn't have particularly quick feet. Tom and, and Pete <laughs> right. didn't have particularly quick feet. But uh, they did have good size, and even Nick Foles, you know, you've got to be able to see, too. So it, it, any one of these guys uh, that are coming into the draft uh, with, a, with a good team, and, and from what I've seen of all of them, uh, certainly should have bright futures. Joe, people like Josh Allen. The problem is, is his completion percentage is down around the mid 50s. You went to the Hall of Fame with a 50 percent completion percentage, so should be re reading too much into the completion percentage for a college quarterback. For any quarterback, absolutely. We threw the ball away more than uh, most people did. We didn't take the loss. If you look at uh, compare completion percentages. 
we're going downtown with the ball most of the time, too, or a lot of the time. Uh, but we refused to take a loss. Sure, we had good pass protection, uh, but when, when somebody was coming clean, that ball was going out and into the ground somewhere, <laughs> and sometimes into the defensive player's hands, but I don't want to talk about those. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think a completion percentage is nice, no doubt about it. Uh, but the game has changed so drastically, uh, throwing the short balls. And the passers are better in general, I think. Uh, Kenny Anderson was uh, accurate uh, with Cincinnati big time. But uh, uh, completion percentages are, are meaningful. But uh, playing in Wyoming under those conditions, I don't know what kind of offense they, they, they have. Uh, or Josh Allen, uh, Wyoming, Mason Rudolph, Oklahoma, the cold weather guys throwing deeper. Uh, no, uh, from what the eyeballs say, uh, they're all gifted athletes. What I don't know and you guys don't know unless you sat down and talked to these guys and looked them in the eyes is what's between the ears, how good are they at handling uh, a variety of situations on and off the field. Joe, you obviously are a Jets man, but you're here in town. You see everything. Across town, another team that we're debating about whether they need a quarterback is the Giants. What are you, are you able to gauge what you think Eli has left in the tank? You know what? Uh, it's like Brady to me in a sense. Are these athletes today, I, how old is Eli? 37. Yeah, man, are you kidding me? George Blander played. He, did, he he was able to play, but he didn't play as much as Eli. And he hasn't taken the hits as, as much as Eli. But uh, I watch Eli play. His arm is still strong, man. His legs are still strong, and he's wily. You, you give him uh, the kind of team that uh, it takes to win a championship, and... Uh, Eli hasn't hasn't looked like uh, he's lost his threat passing ability, and I know, I know, you guys know, he knows what in the heck is going on out on that field before it happens most of the time. Do you have an aversion, Joe, because we've talked about this a lot leading up to the draft tomorrow. You know, there's a lot of speculation that the Giants might take Saquon Barkley with the number two pick, and I, my partner Don and a lot of people feel that's way too early to take a running back. Do you have a problem with taking a running back that high? Uh, I, I, I do because I believe running backs need the offensive linemen, and the running backs, boy, you want to talk about playing some odds. Uh, those guys have it so tough. Uh, they, uh, it is the shortest career of any position on the field, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Running backs. Uh, man, that's uh, that's heavy duty. But to get a great running back, that's saying something, you know. And uh, everyone is, and I've seen Barkley play, and he looks pretty damn remarkable to me. Uh, but boy, it's it, that's a tough position. You got to have. Uh, uh, I think the day of a, a long, long. Uh, career as a running back. Marcus Allen just was absolutely amazing, and today Peterson is still uh, amazing me. I don't know how he's lasted that long, but uh, taking him number one, if you've got the other pieces, yeah, because he's going to give you uh, uh, Barkley can do it all. You just uh, you got to have the other pieces to go with them. You know, Joe, going back to Eli, and I'm a big Eli fan, um, and I do think he has something left. But how many years does he have to have left for you not to draft a quarterback? Oh, I, you know what? The Giants know that better than I do. Uh, I, I don't know how Eli is physically at this point. I, I know he's got the mental part of the game down as well or better than most or, or all of them. Uh, uh, I, I don't know his physical condition right now. But what I'm saying is, is that if you if you could look into a crystal ball and say, all right, I can get two more years out of Eli, is that enough to go past the quarterback? Because at some point you have to address Eli's replacement. So how many years would Eli have to give you for you to feel comfortable taking something other than a quarterback at two? Well, I don't think you have to necessarily take the quarterback in the draft. 
I mean, Nick Foles, I was surprised that he stayed with the Eagles, and, and you saw how he played uh, in, the, in the playoffs and all. He's going to be available again sometime soon. I mean, maybe not this year because he re-signed, but there are other guys. There are other professional quarterbacks on teams now that are starting to come into their own, and uh, I don't think you always have to draft a quarterback to, to make it work for a championship. Now, you're doing great work, Joe, with the Joe Namath Foundation, which supports children's charities and neurological research. So we uh, urge people to visit JoeNamath.org for further information. I've heard you interviewed before, Joe. I know you're really excited about this, and it's an incredible thing that you're doing with your life and your fame, and you must be pretty proud of this. Do you know what, Michael? You guys know this. It, it's not me. It, it's a bunch of us. It's a bunch of us, man. I, and I tell you, I can't tell you how many... Uh, people, uh, 50, 100 people are all part of this foundation that are helping and reaching out to, to put these things together. So uh, it starts at home. We learn at one time or another, uh, moving along, that we're fortunate to be where we are. And there's a whole lot of folks out there, whether they're football players with traumatic brain injuries or or boxers or sports people with brain injuries or just youngsters that have had bad luck or kids that can't go to school because they don't have enough money but they're good students or babies that are coming in too early. You know, uh, we're in a position to help them out and uh, uh, there, there, there's a heck of a lot of people out there doing the same thing we're doing and thank God for that. And Joe, last time we spoke, I didn't get a chance to tell you, I now have four-month-old twins. So think of me. Oh. Oh, oh, man. Right. I don't know what that's like having kids, <laughs> but God bless them. They're nice going. So keep me in your prayers, please. <laughs> yeah, you don't need them. As a parent, I understand you will really need those prayers. Those children, <laughs> they're great, but, boy, they'll test, they'll, they'll test us. Now, Joe, will you be watching the draft tomorrow? Are you interested? Uh, Yes, I am. Of course, I'm interested, man. I I want to see what the Jets do. I want to see what the Giants do. And professionally, uh, those are basically the only two teams I, I pay much attention to. Unless I know someone personally, uh, Alabama players, you know, that are on different teams, I'll be pulling for them for sure. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to watch. I, uh, hey, I'm a fan. Absolutely. I can't wait for the season. I can wait because I have to, but I'm looking forward for the season to start, man. Joe, we love having you on. Thank you so much for giving us some time, buddy. Thanks, Joe. All right. Peter, I always enjoy talking with you, pal. It is a pleasure, Joe. <laughs> okay. Thank you.